you know, I started keeping bees, and a lot of you probably back in the 70s, it was so easy back then. You just put them in the colonies, come back in the summer, take the honey off, nothing bothered them. Now we've got all kinds of issues now. So, um, <clears throat> but I love keeping bees. Uh, when I first started, I had a coach introduce me to beekeeping, and I just went with him one time and just fell in love with it. And then uh, I was lucky because I was a teacher during the spring, we had spring break, and I went with Tom Park, who, who was a state inspector. Back then, all hives were inspected every year. So I got to spend a week with him, and I did that for about three or four years. And then Charlie Cowell, who used to be president of Nashville several times, and he was one of the founding members of our association, <clears throat> spent a lot of time with him. And then there was another member of ours, all these guys are deceased now, Walt Wright, who developed the, those of you have heard of checkerboarding when you're adding supers, I'll explain that in a minute. But he had, had written some articles for American Bee Journal. So I got to spend a little time with some really good beekeepers. <coughs> and they all did things a little bit different, but they all ended up in the same place. So what I may tell you, you may go, well, I don't know about that, but it's just the way I do it. And, but you can pick up some things that maybe you can add to yours. And I listen to people all the time because I learn from other people too. I try to learn something every day. And uh, beekeeping, you can learn something every day. They will blow your mind as far as what they do. And when you keep a lot of colonies, I, <clears throat> right now I probably, I think, <coughs> I'm not really sure. Maybe 75 colonies. It could be 80. I don't know. But <clears throat> I do it all by myself. I have very little help. Uh, I did have a friend of mine help me. I took off 50, 53 supers of honey this past weekend. And we did it. We took 53 supers off in two and a half hours. <laughs> but And I treated my bees for mites at the same time. So... It's all about having a system and following it and sticking to it, and 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 that's what I've done over the years, and um, so it works for me. Um, a couple of things I do, and I don't mind sharing with you. Uh, you know, my largest apiary has 25 colonies in it, and I after I go about through about four colonies, I've already forgotten what the other was, what I just seen. So what I do, I carry red and green tape and a, a sharpie. If I see something wrong with the colony, it gets red tape, and I write on top of it what's wrong with it. If it's green, there's nothing wrong with it. If I put red and green, I need to come back and check it in a few days because there could be something wrong with it. So this works for me. So if you come into my apiary, it's either got red or green on it or both. Um, and it, that works for me too. And the other thing, when I before I take my honey off, I go through the week before, like this one apiary where we took 55 supers off, I go through each colony and I take an X, a Sharpie, on the front of the hive and mark my honey super. And then I, I manipulate frames, too. So let's say, you know, the outside frames, they're the ones they fill up last. And I'll start moving them to the inside two or three weeks off before the, honey, you know, before the honey flows over. So I move things to the inside. But I go through and mark my supers with an X. So when I come back to take the honey off, I'm not looking for anything but Xs. And that, that's what speeds it up. We, use, we used uh, five fume boards. And we put them all on at the same time. And once we started, you just take them one at a time right off, taking supers off. And when we got to the last one, I put a, a shim board. Here it is. This is what I call a shim board. And I don't paint them. That, that's so I'll know I've got them on there. And I put shim board on top, and I treated with Apigard. And all my hives were treated when we left the apiary taking my honey. Uh, all of you, you've heard Clarence talk, you've heard Kent talk. Uh, uh, I've tried all the natural 
products, you know, small sale, anything to the mites. And uh, I started out using uh, Mite Away Quick Strips in the fall. Works. It does two things. It kills tracheal mites and varroa mites. The oxalic acid only kills varroa mites, but it doesn't kill them in the cell. Supposedly, the mite away kills the mites inside the cell. So that's why I use mite away creek strips, and it's the only product that you can use with honey supers on. You say in the fall, but what, in the month, fall. Is, but what month is that? Well, as soon as it drops below 80 degrees. It says on the instructions, <clears throat> 84 degrees. Well, that stuff's made in Canada, and they don't have the humidity and heat like we do here. So it can be 80 degrees here and feel like 90. And the bees are going to feel that 90 heat. And so you have to be really careful with it. So it says 84, but here I would say 80 degrees. Now, <clears throat> when does the mite population peak? July, it peak, it's peaking right now. The first of July, your start, the, the mite bomb is going off right now. Last year, now the year before in Tennessee, about 70% of the bees died. I know we had a lot of bees die in East Tennessee. I know, I've heard that. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, 70% of the bees died. I lost 50%. And I treated in the fall. I said, I'm not doing that again. Well, actually, what I did was I treated in July with Apa Bar. And that's that insectal strip. And Jennifer Berry says, don't even bother using it. And I used it, and I lost 50% of my bees. So last year, I used Apa Guard, which is a thymol product. Now, you have to be a little careful with it because it's heat. It's the heat is the product. And I did, if you buy the little trays, it's 50 milligrams, and you do two treatments two weeks apart. Well, I treated, I took all my honey off, and I treated the 1st of July. <clears throat> and I did one-fourth treatments, or half treatments. So instead of, I bought it in bulk, and I used 25 milligrams, but you do it once a week for four weeks. And... The day I treated, the next day, the heat index was 111 degrees. <laughs> and I thought, well, I just killed all my bees. And I went, I was afraid. And I went out there, and they were all out on the front of the hive. And I fully expected to see a queen on top of the hive looking at me like, what have you done? <laughs> but the queens never stopped laying. And this year, I had a 10% loss. So I was happy. Clarence says if you keep it at 20%, you're doing great. So, uh, Charlie Parton, y'all know Charlie, mm -hmm. he and I pretty much followed the same protocol on treatments. The only difference was he was two weeks later than me. And so he was mid-July, and he still had a major kill-off. Mm -hmm. Once that bomb goes off, the mites, when they get to a certain point, I don't care what you do, it's too late. They're just going to start this downhill slide. So the point I'm trying to make is get your honey off as quick as you can and treat your bees. Now I use Apigard. If you want to do oxalic acid, just treat. Do something. Because if you wait till fall, it's too late. Now the other thing I did this year was I treated with uh, my Quick Pro, Mighty Ways Quick Pro. It's an improved product of the Mighty Way Quick Strips. I did that in uh, March. So I'm treating for mites three times a year. That's the only way you're going to keep the bees alive. I mean, I'm the last person that wants to use chemicals, but this is the world we're in now. And uh, the mites aren't going away. They're getting worse. It's not getting better. It's getting mm -hmm. worse because... Think about all the bees that go from Florida to California to the Dakotas. They're shipping bees all over the country. And then the, these big producers, then they're selling them as packages. And they're sending mites all over the country. 
So, so when you treat three times a year, are you using uh, Apigard all three now? No, I'm using Midaway or Quick Pro in the fall, uh -huh. Quick Pro in the spring, because you can use it with honey supers. It's uh -huh. the only one that can be used with honey supers on. So you're doing Quick Pro both in the fall and in, in March? The, in March. Now, how many of you are moving bees to uh, sourwood? Anybody? It's blooming right now, isn't it? Is it blooming now? There's something. It ends up on the plateau. Right it, now. Yeah, because when I came over today, I saw, I thought I saw sourwood blooming. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, if you're moving, you can't treat because you're, you're, you know, uh, it's honey time. So um, it might be one of those things if you're going to move bees to sourwood that you wait later into the spring to maybe April, mid-April, then use the Mighty Way Quick Strips because you can use it with the honey supers on. Doesn't affect your honey. Now, if it gets too hot, you can sterilize your queen. So it's very important that you don't go over 80 degrees. And in the fall, you look at the weather, have your strips there because when you treat with the Mighty Way Strips, um, the, the formic acid is gone after three days. So if you have a window, if it's in the 70s, you know, we get that sometimes in September. Treat them because in three days it's gone. And you put your insert in, uh, your, uh, take your entrance reducer out, and just put the strips in there, and you don't feed them, you don't bother them, you don't do anything. You just leave them alone during that period. For three days. No, it's, it's really uh, two weeks. Okay. You don't want to bother them because they're a little irritated when you treat them with all this stuff. So, um, Anyway, any questions about that? Now, somebody may say something a little different, but that's what I'm doing. That's what but it if is. you're not doing anything, you're in trouble. And the problem now with people getting into beekeeping is... You know, we have all these new people get in, and then two years their bees are dead, and then they're done. It's very important that we emphasize not being a haver, but being a beekeeper and taking care of those bees. You just can't put them out there now. Used to, we could. When you first started, easy peasy. Now, you've got to be on them. Now, I went into some of my hives <clears throat> When I was doing the inspection to finding the supers that I've taken off, and I noticed uh, brood, good pattern, but they're starting to uncap it. And it's white, no disease, but then I saw mites running around. See, they're irritated because of the mites, and that's that mite bomb going off. And it's going off in your hives right now. They're just, their population, it, it increases so fast. Because one female can have several mites, and it just keeps going on and on. So, any questions about that? You mentioned uh, July, like the first week of July, to do an apa guard. Mm -hmm. that yeah, but I would. My suggestion was is I mean not, I, that's why I'm doing it now. Is it a temper? Temperature sensitive? Yes, thing? you have to be really careful with it. But that's one reason I did the. Uh, half treatments, 25 milligrams. And what what they do is you put it up, up above the brood chamber, it's just a little tray. I buy it in bulk, so it's just a cardboard, and you, they have a syringe, and you measure it out, put it on there. And it, it stinks, they don't like it, and how they spread it through the hive is they're taking it out of the hive, and they're distributing it all through the, it's a fumigant. It's really stinks, yeah. So you're putting it towards the back of the hive? So right in the center. Right in the center. Yep. And then you put a spacer above it because it's important that they get to it. The inner cover is not enough space for them because it it piles up that high up on the, that board. Now the tray probably is about as big a ground as that. And um, so, I mean, it, it seems to work. So kind of gel stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's all I was going to say. It's just, it's like a gel. Gel. Yeah. Yeah. So is that, you're putting in 25 grams or 25 milligrams? Milligrams. 
Now yeah, the tray, if you do the full tray treatment, you can buy the trays already. All you do is peel the aluminum foil back and put it in there. And for somebody that doesn't have a lot of colonies, that's the easiest way to do it. If you're doing a double brew, you put it on the top of the on double top. brew? On mm -hmm. And you have to have the spacer in between. In between the two. Like, like if I'm treating this hive here, yeah. double brew, I put it right there in the middle, okay. put this up there, put the inner cover on it, that's it. Yeah, you can't miss it because the, the pan is high enough that you can't get the other high body back on and let you have a spacer. Yeah, you need a spacer. <laughs> the other thing, how many of you use top feeders that Trevor made? You know, uh -huh. just flip that over where the tray's down and you've got your space. Mm -hmm. I store, I don't have enough room. You know, when you have 75 or 100 feeders, I just leave them on top of the high. I just store them up there. So I try to streamline as much as I can. Little work as possible. So if you've got a hive and you've got some supers on the hive, you're taking the supers off, putting the, the eighth guard on, you're not That's right. it on the very top. I am not taking any more honey off that hive. I'm done. Because it, it, it's a food product. You know, I try to tell people, you're trying to kill a bug living on another bug uh, and without killing a good bug, and it's a food product. You know? kind of hard to do that it is so but mites that's our problems small hive beetles they don't bother me a bit uh, yeah I've lost a couple of hives to small hive beetles but they were weak hives strong colonies they just irritate them. the traps where you put the oil in them they just irritate the heck out of me because when I'm checking hives I'm tilting back and everything and then you spill it I have not used a trap in years. And the good thing about putting the feeders on top, you know, where the screen is up there, the bees run them up in the feeder. I take the top off. I just mash about 50 of them right up there. I get great pleasure in doing it. <laughs> and i tell you what else I did one time, and I really enjoyed it, was I had a wheat colony, and it was just slimed like crazy. In one of my apiaries, they have fire ant mounds out there. I laid that frame down there. You talking about those fire ants getting, they went to work quick. And they took care of them. So anyway, I got pleasure out of that too. <laughs> so any questions about that? I just, um, just tell you little things that I do. You know, uh, I, don't, I don't wear gloves. You know, I'm pretty gentle with the bees. Um, now, when I'm taking honey off, I wear gloves because they're not really happy when they're doing that. But it, you can work better without gloves, I think. And they, I get stung a little bit, but not much because I'm gentle with them. Yes, sir. What do you use to chase the bees out of the super? For when you're Bigo. Okay. It works. Yeah. I just, is that the almond smell and stuff? It's, all, like it's awful. Or not the, the foul. And like you can't it. store it at your house or anywhere. Like rotten yeah. eggs? Yeah, it's bad. No, I get the stuff is, I use now is that new one. It smells like almonds. Boy, they can't stand it. It smells so good. It yeah. doesn't gag it. It doesn't, not, doesn't smell like rotten eggs. Yeah. I keep trash cans in all my apiaries, you know, with the top on them. Entrance reducers, anything I might need, I keep it in there. And that's where I store my fume boards when I'm not using them because it's outside. Because you cannot. Keep them inside. Stink. It stinks. So, um, but the, the other thing I don't know. The Honey Bee Coalition. If you've read this, this this is really good. And then you can decide what you want to do. But and you can go on their website. But it explains everything about Varroa and what you you should do and all the treatments. Um, how many of you use an oxalic acid? Yeah. You know, Jennifer Berry, she said, I'll never lose bees. And the reason is they're constantly going queenless. You know, you trap the queen, keep her in a cage for two weeks, then you release her for a week, and then you use the oxalic acid because there are no caps. See, oxalic acid does not work under the caps. So, and you know, well, if you did it once a week for three or four weeks, you could get them all. But that's pretty hard on the bees. 
oxalic acid is pretty hard. I just haven't used it. I just don't want to carry a battery around. You know, that's more work. <laughs> Well, you can use that little six volt you can get from uh, Walmart for like forty bucks, so it's not very heavy. So you treat, you trap the queen for a week, and then you let her go for a week. No, you trap her for two weeks, let her go, and then you treat it on the third week because all your uh, brood's uncapped. Now that's how she does it and doesn't lose any bees. But if you're just doing it, you're killing the mites on the outside, but you're, the majority of them are under the caps. So you're not really killing. The best time is in December because there's hardly any brood in there. So, but uh, the reason I'm here is to talk about using the double screen. And uh, several years ago, um, I just got tired of losing swarms. I've looked at the Demery method, the Snell Grove method, and I just sat down and I thought, what is the easiest way to keep these bees from swarming? And in the last 10 years, I've probably lost two swarms, but I caught both of them, so I didn't really lose them. Um, and one of them, I'll show you in one of the pictures in a minute. What you do is, you know, in swarm prevention, can we go to the next one? Absolutely. You know, in honey production, I'm all about producing honey. Can y'all see? Uh, and you're not going to produce any honey if you're in a bad location. So you can have the strongest bees in the world. So location is very important. You have to have a good queen. <coughs> feed um, early spring, just a little bit, not a lot. I do more of my feeding in July and August because we're in a dirt then, there's nothing really coming in. And hopefully, when the goldenrod blooms, we get a little moisture where they can get some of that. But uh, that's when the bees are really stressed, especially with the mites, July and August, and it's hot. So I'll feed all summer after the honey flow's over. Not a lot, maybe I'll fill the feeder up once a week on all of them, and just keep that going. Um, the other thing is reversing the hive bodies. Now, I start that in March, and I do not stop reversing my hive bodies until the honey flow's over. I keep her down on the bottom all the time. So a lot of people just reverse them once, maybe twice, and that's it. Mm -mm. I keep reversing the whole time. Uh, so we, I want to keep her down low. How often is that that you change? Every couple of weeks maybe. And it's really, you just look and if, if, if all the brood is capped down below and it's getting ready to hatch, she's in the second one, this is getting ready to hatch down below, so you move that up there because they're hatching, she'll move up. So I reverse a lot and that's important. And it's also helping with swarm prevention. So these are some of the things about helping swarm prevention. Okay, can we go to the next one? So you're running double deeps? I run double deeps. Now you can do the same thing if you're running all mediums. You're just keeping her down on the bottom. All right? You know, and I'm sure your honey flow is very similar, similar to ours, but, you know, somewhere around the 1st of April, you know, we start adding soup. And I usually add drawn comb first. But I add foundation. You know when the honey flow starts, and you've got not all colonies do this. When you start seeing those white strips up on top of the frames, you better be giving them some room. Because it's the young bees that, that stimulate swarm. And these bees are looking for a place to put wax, and they don't have it. So they're putting it up on the frames. I'm sure some of you've seen it on the inner cover. You know, so when you start seeing a lot of white, put some foundation on. Because they're looking for a place to put wax. This will help in the swarm prevention. So foundation, add drawn comb first. Now some people, they'll take three or four scissors, stack them up. I don't do that. I add them as they need. I'll move this out of your way. 
The other thing is this is a technique that Walt Wright developed, and he had written some articles about it. You could probably Google Walt Wright, and he can tell you about checkerboard. It's when, let's say you have a super on, and you're going to add the next one. What you do is, instead of just putting it on top, you mix the frames. You put the full ones to the outside, then you'll put an empty one. Full one, empty one. It's checkerboard. You're mixing the full ones with the empty ones. On You'll have that in two supers. You can do that with foundation too. Now sometimes on foundation, now you can't mix foundation, well you can, but what will happen is if you mix it with drawn cone, sometimes it will not get drawn out. But that's sometimes that's the only choice you have. But when you start adding foundation, the next super of foundation, checkerboard. And then you just keep going up with them. That helps in swarm prevention because you're giving those young bees a place to put that wax. The cause of swarming is congestion. So you're trying to give them room, but not too much room. Um, all right, let me go to the next one, please. And what I do when I'm, this is why I don't use a small high beetle traps or anything, because what I do is I, I tilt the hives back and see, I can just set them like that. I'll, I can even take a light, look up in there. I'm looking for swarm cells. If they're just the caps with just a little bit in there, I'll knock it off. But when I start seeing five, six, seven, eight swarm cells, they're going to go. They're getting ready to swarm. And if you ever see a capped queen cell, they're out of here. So what you do is, and the only way you can stop it, this is a last resort. Before you get to this, you've added drawn comb, you've added foundation, you've cut all those little queen cells out. And so now what I'm going to do is, and you'll need extra boxes, is I'm going to go through this hive and I'm going to find the old queen. Now you know how hard it is to find the queen when there's 60,000 bees. <coughs> I have spent an hour and a half looking for a queen. And you've got, if you're going to stop them from swarming, you've got to find the old queen. And the best thing to do is mark them. How many of you mark your queens? How many of you afraid to mark your queens? Okay, I'm going to show you an easy method. You can get these. I've seen, I got this from Kelly's. It's just a little plastic screen. And what I'll do is, I'll, let's say I find the queen here. I can lay that frame right up there, and they're not mashing any bees. And then I'll take this and set it right down on top of that queen. And then I can kind of mash it down a little bit until she gets right where I can touch her. Now, when you mark a queen, just barely touch her. Because if you push too hard, you're going to have a painted queen. I've done wings, <laughs> tail. She was easy to find. Though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very easy to find. So, but if you're afraid to mark a queen, get you one of these. What is that called? Uh, you know, I'm not really sure. It, it's for marking queens. You can see where I've marked them. You just, because I'm kind of all thumbs now. And. Um, I've killed a few queens before, so this is just easy. You just set it down and just kind of mash it down on it till you get her in the right place and you barely touch it. And you'll be really proud of yourself marking your queen. You can leave her in there for a few minutes. It's not hurting anything. Blow in a little bit to dry her out and then just pull it off. Put her back down in there. There you go. You've got your queen mark. What do you use for marking with? Uh, marking pins. You can buy them. I think this year is green. <clears throat> I was marking queens, and my green marking bean is in one apiary somewhere. I haven't found it yet. <laughs> it's in the grass. It's green. It's kind of hard to find. But I will find it. During the winter, I find all kinds of hive tools in my apiary. <laughs> hey, Joel, yes, is sir. that a push in thing? Well, it used to have the little Spikes. points on it. Okay. I took those off. I just set it down on there. Okay. Yeah. So, um, 
I see one here. It's called a round push-in clean marker gauge. Yeah. Was it five bucks? Something like uh, that? $12.75. Yeah. But anyway, that's an easy way to mark the queen. This will not work unless you find that queen. So when you do find her, you take her and put her in a separate box. Now I'm acting like this is a Z because all my equipment's on the hives. And then I'll find more brood, no queen cells. I've got her there. So I'll find brood, cat brood, put it in here with her. Now let's say this frame has queen cells. This one goes down here. I'm putting all the queen cells <coughs> down below and brood. And what I'm going to have with her is brood, no queen cells. You've got to get rid of the queen cells. So you check it. And then once I do that, <coughs> what I'm going to do, and I'm all this stuff. You have to have extra boxes with you. You need the extra tops. Because I'll tell you in a minute what happens when you can't find the queen. So what I'm going to do now is I've got the old queen in here, brood, no queen cells. I've got brood, queen cells. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this double spring. Well, let's say I have honey supers too. They go on here. So honey supers go on the bottom high. Let's say I have another one. You just stack them up. But then what you're going to do is you're going to take, and y'all can pass this around and look at it. You see they have all kinds of entrances and everything. What you have is you have a top and a bottom entrance. You have them on the sides and in the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this double screen and I'm going to stack it up here. I'll put it up here. Open this up. In the I, back. In the back. I'll turn it around and show it to you. And I'm going to put the old queen up here. So now what I've got is, see the entrance is open. Now, the foragers that are up here, when they come out the back of that hive, where are they going to go when they come back? They're going to come back in the entrance down here. So all the old bees and the foragers are going back in here. So now, two things about the double screen, or a couple of things, is, yes, we're raising a queen down here. She's never going to slow down laying, because what's this hive doing to this one? keeping it warm. Mm -hmm. So even though there are less bees up here, she's going to keep rocking. But she doesn't have enough nurse bees to take care of all they of will, Some of the foragers will stay there. They will take care of that brood. <coughs> if there's a shortage... They'll change? Huh? They'll change? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're going to stay with that brood. So here's what will happen is, and see, I said we put cat brood up here with her. Yeah. So they're getting ready to hatch. Okay. And you've got uh, brood down here and queen cells. So what I do is, I don't even look down here. I just stay out of this hive. <clears throat> and then what I'll do is, I don't look for eggs or anything. I just leave them alone. Because, it, let's say you have, a, you have a capped queen cell. <clears throat> they cap it at six days, right? Okay, she hatches in 16. Then she's going to mess around the hive a little bit. Then she's going to mate, and it'll take her to about 30 days before she starts laying. So all I'm doing is, on this bottom hive, and when I check it, all I'm doing, I pick up the whole double screen up, and I have a, different, a separate top for her. You have to keep them separated. So she's over here, and then <clears throat> what I'll do is, is they're bringing in nectar. See, what happens is, all this brood down here is starting to hatch. And you've got the queen that's hatched out. But she's not laying, so they're not taking care of any brood. What are they doing? They've all become foragers. <clears throat> so they just, the, 
the population becomes, they all become workers. Mm. They're going out mm. and you'll just start stacking them up. Now, they don't do so good drawing foundation because you don't have the young bees. So what you do is you keep adding here and then in about 30, 35 days, I'll take her off, set her over here, and then I'll, I'll go through the hive and i start looking for eggs. So when you add those to the lower, you're adding drawn comb. That, right. yeah, because they're not likely to draw foundation, maybe. Yeah. Um, but what happens is, you know, they'll bring it in and start stacking it up. Mm -hmm. I'll show you some pictures there and how it works. Okay. But then the other thing you do is, is this. All right. We've got the entrance here. Now you've got all these bees that are starting to hatch out. And usually it's about two weeks. But what I do is when I see the top of this, the frame's just covered in bees, that means they're getting crowded. So what I'll do is I'll close this entrance and I'll open the bottom like that. And then I'll open the one on the side up here. So when these bees fly out, where are they going to go? To the back of the hive, where they were. And now they're going down here. So you're keeping your workforce up down here and you're, so that they can bring the nectar in. Does anybody have a question? Does everybody understand that? Yeah, I'm wondering how the you're going to have two queens now. How the queen, oh, yeah. how the queen pheromone is confusing the heck out yeah. of them. No, by. no, no, because the screen is this thick. You know, the pheromone it's not smell. They spread it by touching. Uh, so and they can't touch each other. Now, okay. yeah, they're going to go down here, but they don't care. You know, everything's happy. And um, so, everybody have any questions? Yeah, go ahead. You put the, the queen in there with three frames and brood, right? Up here? Yeah. Oh, I filled it up. Oh, yeah. So it's gonna, you got to fill it with, uh, with other frames. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's going to be full okay. of frames. Okay. <clears throat> you know, I might put a little honey up here. I've never had to feed these on top. Never. Because they're bringing in nectar. And then when they, then, when it starts getting crowded again up here, I'll close this one, open it down here. Well, if I can get it to open. Anyway. Hey. Dadgum propolis. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I'll open the bottom one and then open the top one over here on this side. So when they fly out over here, they're coming back, going here, down there. I've still got this queen laying up here. Now, if I get another queen down here, I just keep going. I keep adding, and she's laying now. Now, <clears throat> the, the queen down below, really, the bees she produces probably not going to help too much with the honey fluff or bringing in surplus. But you're running two queens. <clears throat> and then usually uh, around mid-June, I'll take this hive off. I've made a split. Yeah. And if the... I did 12 splits this year. Six of them made queens. The other six didn't do it. Yeah, and I think it was because they were it was they were swarming early, and I, it, we were Lankford and I were talking about the weather was really messed up, windy, raining. You know, they either flew out and didn't come back, didn't make bird ate them. Didn't know. <laughs> But, uh, so I was about 50% on two queens. But right now, I've got hives with two queens going right now. Yes? I, I don't know, I feel like this might be a dumb question, but. No, there's no dumb questions in Mickey. Um, I feel confused as to why the bees would come out one entrance in the back and then come into another entrance in okay. the front. That doesn't make any sense to me. They usually well, come back to the same Well, because you're not a bee. <laughs> 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 uh, they always come back to their <clears throat> entrance. 
the one they left. The one they left from. Mm -hmm. When they come out, they do this. Right. And that's their entrance. Right? This one is down here. Right. So what you're doing is, and I can't get this one open, but when you change the entrances, let me start all over. Oh, yeah. Let me help you back get that one up. All right, here's the back of the hive right here. So I've got this up here. The old queen is up here. All right, when they fly out, this is not their normal entrance. Mm -hmm. So the foragers that are up there, when they fly out, they're going to go back to their original entrance, which is the front of the hive. Why wouldn't they come back to the one that they flew out of, though? That's they didn't orient. They did not orient. The, their hive is at the front. Yeah, they, they okay. just flew out, and they're going back to their entrance. Okay? And then what you do is, when you start getting crowded up here again, you close the top one and open the bottom then you open one on the side up here. So now the new foragers, when they fly out, they're going to go back to the back of the hive and go in the bottom hole. That's their hole. It's but, just off about an inch. Yeah, it's only off an inch. They're happy. And during the honey flow, it doesn't matter. All bees are happy. <laughs> if they're bringing in nectar, you can go anywhere you want to. They don't care as long as you're bringing in nectar. And um, so anyway, that's how it works. I think I got ahead of this. Let's try. You want to move forward or back or what? All right, no, it's all right. Just keep going. It's, when you do this, you need several tops. The reason is, now during the honey flow, you can do this. In July and August, you can't do this because you'll starve them robbing. But you've got to find that queen. And, and what I have done, is, like I said, I've spent an hour and a half looking for queens. I'll pay, take each super and put it on its own top. And I might go check another colony. So I've got five or six supers just lined up down through here. <clears throat> and I'll go work another colony. In about 30 minutes, I come back. Well, this hive here is kind of loud and roaring and everything. And this one's kind of roaring, or this super, but this one's real quiet over here. So which one do you think the queen's in? The quiet one. The quiet one. Quiet one. So that's one way I can kind of narrow it down a little bit. Okay, she's here. And it that works most of the time. Yes, sir? You ever use that as a splitting method, a way to well, have an extra queen? And make I it did that, just remove it? and I had one that was wanting to swarm, and I didn't have a double screen with me. And so what I did was I did that right there, and I had I put I made three hives out of one. I put the old queen off to the side. They're all lined up three. I put queen cells in the one where the original hive was, and one to the left. They all three have queens now. Stopped them from swarming, but because I made the split, messed up your honey production. No honey production. I think I maybe. May have, maybe got two supers of honey off of it. Uh, but you're cutting your honey. When you make splits, it's great for making splits, but I like making honey. Uh, by the way, I sell my honey. I have been selling it. If I sell it as one pound jar, I sell it for $10. I have now gone up to 12 Do not give your honey away because people will pay for it because it is local honey, and you treat it as that because it's special. And these bees are too expensive to keep, not charge enough. Ruth Ann, what are you selling a pound of honey for? So, a pound of honey is 12 fluid ounces, correct? 16. Six, six, well, the, queen, the queen line jars are, are 12 ounces, but really? it's a pound of honey. But it's a pound of honey, it's 12 yeah. fluid ounces. Really? So, yeah. 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 so people say you need to raise all right. I sell for a dollar of fluid ounce. That's how much I sell for. Really? I'm selling too cheap. Dollars of fluid ounce. You got you got it. You paid for your trip. I told you. I learned something every day. Paid for your trip. Anyway, um, 
a couple of things. God, you just made my day. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct, though. That is absolutely right because wow. it's a, a hyper dense flu. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. When you put that up there, you have a, a medium on there, or do you put a deep again? After. See, my honey supers, I run medium since my honey supers. You know, yeah, so do I. But when you took that, that one off with the queen in, did you replace it with another deep on top of that bottom deep? No. I Why'd you put a medium in there? Because these are honey supers now. Yeah, but the queen's going to go up there and lay eggs in it. Uh, no, she won't. Not for 35 days. And I'll have it stacked up so high it won't matter. She won't go that high. Um, and they'll be full. Yeah. So wouldn't she be honey bound? Man, that messed me up. Wouldn't she be, <laughs> wouldn't she be honey bound? You're giving it away. We, we can teach Give you all kinds of <laughs> But wouldn't that make, wouldn't, because you would have so much honey, that would make her honey bound so she'd stay in the bottom box? Yeah, they, uh, a lot of times what happens is, you know, the queen's in there, but there's so much nectar in there, there's no place for her to lay. So I might give them... If I, you know, I might see a little spot of eggs down there, uh, but the ones I've seen where I didn't see any indication of queen, and uh, they were agitated when I opened them up. That's another way you can tell whether they're queen, right? Hey, I, I want to get this uh, honey thing. John, what are you selling <laughs> per fluid, fluid ounce? Eighteen and a quarter. Eighteen and a quarter. Eighteen and a quarter. free. Free, I'll buy it all. <laughs> I can't make it fast enough. I'll buy it all. So you're not, you're not. Well, you got Ruth Ann. I need to be about fourteen. Ruth Ann will tell you, it's hot. It's I get stung. I'm not, you know, it's worth a lot to me. So she's, she's at the higher end probably of our. That's okay folks. though. And that, I'm not saying that's wrong. Seriously, just, you know. No, you need to be. Well, what I say is you can't go to um, Wendy's and buy a burger and fries and a drink for less than nine or ten dollars now. You can't tell me that a pound of honey is worth about the same amount as that. Right. It's not. Yeah, and, and John, John just, I'm going to dig at him a little bit. John just moved from a two-frame <laughs> extractor, hand-spun extractor on about a hundred hives. <laughs> He's really, for his labor, he was really, he was really worse than he is now. So, <laughs> it's really great. Yes, sir. Uh, I got two questions. What's the minimum number of root frames you put in the top, and do you feel you you limit your number of queen cells? In the I leave them all in there. Yeah, I, I had more trouble this year. I was swimming or so. I burned them every time. Burned them about five x one. I've never had that much trouble. And I had hives that just do three or four. Now the other thing, if you've got high, if you've got ten or fifteen queen cells, take a minute and start a new. But you know, me, I'm in honey production, and I'm, I don't have that much time. I, I usually I just, you know, I'll do this and go on. You know, I can make nukes if I want to, but I just want to make honey. What's the minimum number of root frames you put at the top? I'm oh, sorry. What's the minimum number of cap root frames you put at the top? Uh, five or six. Oh yeah, I'll pack them in there. Because see, you're relieving some of the congestion down here too when you do that. And uh, but anyway, that's what I do. It seems to work. I've had people tell me that ain't gonna work. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and it works. I can show so, you. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, let's go to the next one. Okay. Yeah, because we need to wind up here. Uh, that's see here. Here's this is it in. Right here, see, um, there's a brood. I even put a honey super up there, but you know, we're stacking them up down here. And at this time, I think there were queens in both of them. You can go to the next one. Well, we talked about the entrances. You have a lot of trees around your uh, around your apiary, so they don't, they, you have those blow down with the, the way the winds are mm -hmm. come through? Yeah. No. Well, I went through that about the and look for eggs. Just be patient. You know, wait at least 35 days, and then wait a couple more before you. And then what I do is, if I don't think there's a queen there, I'll take a piece of newspaper and put her on there, and then come back in a couple of days and move her, the old queen, down to the bottom. 
and then you're back rocking and rolling. No coin. I mean, you're you're good. All right, let's go to the next one. And I, it's I say every two weeks, but it's really when you see the tops of the frames. You know when they're packed in there. When there's a lot of bees, if you're not seeing a lot of bees up on top, don't change it. They just haven't hatched out yet. Okay. And this is one of my apiaries. I had bought some packages, and I, uh, I am not ever going to buy another package because I bought nukes to replace my losses, and I got them March 23rd. And they were good, strong nukes. They came out of Florida, good queens. They were buck fast. And pay $170 for them. Taking four supers of honey off of them. I mean, the math works. So if you lose, nukes are the way to go. But you got to get them early. And you need to be careful who you buy them from. Some of these guys, they make these nukes. They just put a queen in there, put brood in there, and you know, I think I think if somebody's selling nuke, that queen needs to be laying for at least three weeks before you let that nuke up. So who'd you get from in, in I Florida? I got them from Fox Honey Farm. Fox. They're good. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah. So this is what it looks like right here. <coughs> See, there's the entrance. I changed it around. And I always, when they get stacked up like that, end up with a deep super of honey on top of the hive. <laughs> and it's awful. But oh, I'm sorry. That's a, no, go ahead. I was ready to go to the next one. But these, uh, some of these I didn't do. Um, the splits, I just add supers at the right time and they didn't want to swarm. But it gets kind of dangerous when they get stacked up that high. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of honey on there. All right, let's go to the next one. But here's here's one you can see. There's a double screen, double screen, double screen, double screen. Not all of them need it. You know, you're trying. This is a last resort, the double screen thing. Okay. <coughs> there it is again. And I said I lost two swarms, and I think it was this hive here. I didn't give them a super in time, and I didn't change the entrance, and they swarmed, and I caught them, and made a split. But we had a queen down here, this queen swarmed again, I had queen cells here, and I moved the queen, so I got a split, the honey produced. So you have to give them room on top or change that entrance, or they'll get crowded up there. Yes, sir? Uh, you don't put any queen excluders in between there? No, but I think I might start using because some. Because mine went up and they ruined the honey. They go up in those mediums and then she wants to lay eggs. And I don't extract that then. Yeah, I'm but he's, keep, have he's bodies keeping in the, everything moving. I keep that queen down low. I find her and make her down below. Yeah, but what, if if you stop reverse, her from going up stairs. Well, if you reverse on a regular basis, okay, you gotta reverse. you're keeping her down there. Mm. Okay. That's one reason. Queen training. Yeah. yeah, but I think uh, I think you know I've always heard queen excluder queen excluders are honey excluders. They slow the bees down. But I've talked. Charlie Parton uses them. Um, Jim Garrison uses them. He said it doesn't affect it. So I may use just to try. It. See, I want to try things. <laughs> I've never been afraid to try things. But I've killed bees, too, trying things. <laughs> I drill holes in the front of my super, so the bees go right in the super instead you know, of going downstairs. Back in the 70s, the thing to do when you had uh, lots of bees, we would, uh, on the top super, slide it back a little bit, and they'd use, you hmm. know, you'd slide yeah. it back where it was like yes, yeah. Right. And they'd use that as an entrance. You well, everybody... That? I don't know why we don't do it now. I, put I, a I mean, cork I don't worry it. about small high bills. Yeah, I, I put just, a, cork, a cork in it when I don't want to use it no more. And right. it shuts it off. All right. Okay. Is that it? At yeah, your new higher honey price, you can afford to use that cork. <laughs> 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 we're, 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 we're single handedly responsible for honey inflation in Nashville. <laughs> I have actually. Um, uh, I have two 20 frame extractors 
And I used to use one of those pierce knives, but it scorches the honey. So I started using Kelly's cold knife. You know, it's just a, a bandsaw blade. You know how sharp they are. And it, there's no fatigue because it's real light, and it just slices right through there. Well, I bought a Maxan uncapper spinner for this year. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. It is it's expensive, but are you talking about fast? You can uncap a frame in two seconds. <coughs> so it works good. Now, are you running nine frames in your supers? Uh, a lot of times in my honey supers, I run nine frames. Sometimes in the brood boxes, I run nine frames. Right. Yeah. It just makes it easier. It doesn't help with swarm prevention. It just makes it easier to get them out. Is that it? So uh, see what's next. Is, is it, that so it? in the fall? This one, I think this was my best producer last year. There it is. And I took the queen off, so that's what it was left with right there. All right, that's it. Right. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. Here's the, uh, this is, I haven't used this one, so this will be the one you wrap off. All right, great. All right, so it's time.